Hey guys, I'm Jerome Bruner and I'm here campaigning to you guys today to choose my Discovery and Learning Theory in your classroom. To start off, I just want to give you guys some background knowledge on me. I was born and recently deceased in New York City. I started my university schooling at Duke University where I just got my bachelor's degree and then I went to Harvard University to get my doctorate in psychology and then I went to took a little road trip to World War II where I was an expert in um, psychological welfare and then I went back to Harvard to be a professor. Then I left and went to the University of Oxford to be a professor of ex um, experimental psychology. And then my last profession, I was a professor at the um, New School for Social Research and a fellow at the New York Institute for the Humanities. Um, and over many years, I published many, many works. And so for my discovery learning theory, um, I had a lot of um, help from my professors, um, um, professors like John Piaget and Lev Vygotsky, other constructivists. And so the main um, framework for discovery learning is that students use their prior knowledge and background experiences um, to use them as they um, build upon what they're learning and the knowledge that's being um, um, instilled on them in the classroom. Um, and that's really closely aligned with the constructivist um, theory where um, students um, build a body of knowledge based on past experiences. So very similar. But the discovery learning theory has five principles. Um, principle one through three um, really is kind of like a scaffolding technique where the teacher um, is side by side with the student at first, um, helping them with um, what they're learning. And then um, the teacher takes a little step back and lets the students work in pairs um, to um, do, get some findings and do some things on their own. And then the students are solely by themselves and um, are able to discover and inquire things on their own and that's um, really where students learning is um, best for me. Um, and then with the fourth principle that's just really explaining that um, students acquire the knowledge um, and not memorize just the little facts here and there. And the fifth one is um, failure and feedback and that's really just um, we wanting students to realize that it's okay if they mess up because they can learn from their failures and they can really learn from the feedback that we give them so they don't make those mistakes a second time. And so with discovery learning in an elementary school classroom, it really involves a lot of inquiry-based um, activities like in a lesson plan you could do telling stories, um, experiments, um, playing games, using visual aids, that all really is discovery learning because it's involving students in um, what they're doing and that's really what um, discovery learning is all about. Um, as well as those activities in the lesson plan, you can also use scaffolding or guided practice. Um, those really um, go back to those um, first three principles of discovery learning. Um, what's best about discovery learning is that um, it really gets students involved in the classroom and that's really the best time to instill this technique on students is in elementary school because in hopes that they will take this with them and use it in the long run throughout the rest of their schooling. Um, so some pros and cons of this um, learning theory, um, the pros being that it really encourages motivation and active involvement and creativity because students are really getting to that final um, task and final thoughts on their own and so they're doing that and they're really motivated because they're excited that they're getting there on their own. 
Another one is that it can really be adjusted to the learner's pace and uh, because students aren't all the same. As well as this ensures a high level of retention because um, since students aren't just memorizing facts, they are knowing this knowledge so they are able to retain it and um, for their upper grades when they use it in the future. And the downsides and cons to this one, um, it's not really a main instruction um, theory because it's very time consuming. Um, so it would you would really need to um, use it just for one subject maybe one day and then use it for a different one the other day. It's not something you use the whole entire time um, throughout the day in the classroom. And it can be very um, overwhelming for students that like structure because this one is not very structured very well. It's very um, here and there and students um, who like structure wouldn't really be for it and um, Teachers will have to really need to be um, prepared for questions that they um, might not be aware of because of the different questionings and discussions that are going on. So I hope today that I have um, encouraged you guys to use Discovery Learning in your classroom. I am Jerome Bruner and have a nice day.